and welcome to Get the Word in Your Face International. This is Pastor Cheryl Jackson coming to you with a word from the Lord. God is good. He's good all of the time and worthy to be praised. He's the Most High God, El Elyon El Che, the living God who loves us with a true agape love. He wants to pour that love into our heart, write it on our minds, and keep our heart and mind in perfect peace. He's our resting place. He is the one who's told us, <laughs> look it. I will give you wisdom and knowledge. I will give you w spiritual wisdom. Knowledge from on high. He'll pour that wisdom and knowledge into our hearts and write it on our minds so that we can walk a holy life out. We can walk up in holiness. We can live in our hearts with true holiness, with completeness, because we're in Christ who's completed everything. He's ascended into the heavens and, and, and poured out gifts on us so that we can go about doing good in this earth, so that we can love like God has loved us. He wants to lead us and guide us in all truth. Jesus is the truth. <laughs> when you say, what is truth? When you look out here in this world and you see all of these things that everyone believes, you say, what is truth? When you see those who say, I love God, I follow Christ, and they live just like the world, when they don't have faith, we look and, and we say, what is truth? Well, the truth is in Jesus. The spirit of truth has been sent into our hearts. The Father has sent His Son. The truth, the Word of God, has been sent into this world to show us that nothing trumps the Word of God. Every word that the Father has said, I'm telling you, wherever He has sent His Word, it will do. It does what He sent His Word to do. It accomplishes the thing. Will and has done already and still does his word that has been sent into our hearts is in operation right now that, that truth that knowledge of God that knowledge of what Jesus Christ the son of the living God has done for us by bringing us into the house of the Lord by separating us from our sins for, by delivering us from judgment it's right there in our heart we need we need to keep it on our minds that's why it's called get the word in your face so that this word will accumulate in you and override all the lies in the in this world all the schemes of the enemy nothing shall defeat you because the greater one is in you. The lies of the enemy can't penetrate this armor, the armor of truth. God's word is truth. The armor is the word of God. Light, light is all around God. It, it reveals truth. And there's truth in every word of God. And that word has been, I'm telling you, it's in your heart and on your mind. At least it's supposed to be on your mind because we come here to the table that God set before us to be renewed in the knowledge of God. The Lord is our rock. He is our salvation. He is the strength of our lives. He's our rock, our refuge and strength. He's our habitation. He is our fortress. He's our high tower. He's the one we run to in, in, in safety. We, and in fact, we run to him already and we stay in that place of who he is and who we are in him. He is now our father. He is our father. The God of this world is not our father. When we said yes to Jesus Christ, we separated ourselves from darkness, God, well, you know, the power of God. We said yes, the Lord said, yep, yeah, I'll take that. All those who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved, that's what the word says. He brings us straight into his house. 
we immediately leap from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. But it's our desire to learn of him. It's our desire to be like him, to be what he's created us, created us to be. It's that desire, like Jesus' desire to get us saved. I know, I know. People want to say, people say all kinds of things about that moment that Jesus got on his knees and said, if it, you, you know, take this cup from me. And he was agonizing with the soul. The spirit was willing, but the flesh was weak. Jesus didn't tell them, tell the disciples to do something that he wasn't doing. He told them to do exactly what he was doing in order to do the will of the Father, to do what was right, to pray at all times. Prayer is an armor. Putting everything before God, it's, it, it brings, it builds the armor. <laughs> you get strength from the Lord. He strengthens you so that you can do all things through Christ. So that you can go ahead and write that book. So that you can go ahead and make that video. So that you can go ahead and do all the good things that God would give your hands to do. That you know to do in your heart. Somehow I got away from... Okay, that great desire. Even though Jesus had to go through this agony and this pain, it's not like he wasn't willing. There was a passion in him that drove him. That he, I mean, what, uh, Hebrews chapter 12 again. I think I'm going to go from the King James. Yes, he despised the shame of the cross, but it was good for him to do. He did it for righteousness sake. He did it for the will of the Father. There was a passion that drove him, and that passion was love for the Father. The, our, our love for God is because He loves us. The Father loves His Son. And because we love the Son, I'm telling you, you're loved more than you can possibly imagine. And because of the Father's great love, we have this burning passion to be made in the image of Him who created us. To be like Him. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 12, right? Looking on to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. He despised. He didn't. So, oh, I love this pain. I love people kicking me and spitting in my face. He didn't. There was no, no desire for that. This was a pure love. Of God. I love my Father. Thy will be done in this earth as it is in heaven, Father God. Glory to your name. So, I was just talking about this great desire we have for Him and to be pulled into His presence. By this desire we have for the one who loves us so completely. Who wants to fill our heart and fill our mind with the knowledge of his will. With all wisdom and spiritual understanding so that we can walk worthy of the call we've been called to. Again, I tell you, we are ambassadors of Christ. Letting all the world know that Jesus is the way that leads to life. Everyone who's been drawn a breath on this planet will live and will die. And they all have a place to go to. Every soul has a place that has been assigned to go. But we are the ones who make that assignment. We are the ones who say yes or no to God 
every person outside of you, driving past you, walking, jogging, running, jumping, playing, whatever they're doing, clicking on their phones, it's a soul that belongs to God that needs to make a decision today of who they're going to serve. The God of this world keeps them blinded, but you are a light in the world because you said yes to Christ. And that light, I mean, when you go by, when you sit next to, when you stop at that light, there is something about you that is so radiant that it affects the person next to you. Some people get angry and some people wonder. They look at you and they know that there's something. You can change a life. We can change lives because we have been accepted in the beloved. So why is this called a rock in my shoe? Oh, we'll get to that. But the veil that was once on our hearts has been taken away. Now we shine as lights in this world. And our behaviors need to line up. And the way that they line up is because we're drawn into this perfect love of God. He's the one who perfects. So when I say perfect, I mean perfection. And being in his presence perfects you. Coming to this word perfects you. You're being matured. That's the word I'm looking for. You're being matured. You're coming to the head. <laughs> and, the, and, and, the, and the head is mm, coming to the head. Coming to, uh, what is the word for, for that? A place of maturity. Coming up to the top. <laughs> I can't think of a good word for that one because it, it, it's that we're coming to a head, not to the head of heads, not to the God of gods, but we're coming into our completeness, into our maturity. The more we bask in the knowledge of God, the more we come to him. And then I don't mean just sitting here reading the word, acknowledging him that he's with us every step of the way. When things happen that you don't, that I want to say we don't understand, we don't need to say I don't understand. I, I don't think we need to lean on that. Because when we lean on the word I don't understand, we end up in a place of confusion. It doesn't always get answered. What our response should be is, Lord, you see that? You know that? Lord, you're with me. What about this? What do you say? Maybe, maybe for a brief moment, under your breath, you'll speak in tongues. Maybe for a brief moment, you, you just, you'll say, Lord, help. That, that moment where... That thing that is happening, because I'm tired of what we claim we do not understand. If God already knew that that was going to happen in this day or night, maybe he tried to warn us and we weren't paying attention. Jesus knew what was going to happen when he went to that cross. That's why he, 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 he had all this great, he sweat with great drops of blood. He sweat. I believe he was seeing the picture, the whole layout of what was going to happen. He's seen crucifixions before. Only this is going to be way worse. Because it's already written in the book of Isaiah. He saw. He knew that he was going to be so marred that no one would be able to recognize him. They didn't even know by the time they were done with him. They didn't even know if he was a man anymore. This is how gruesome they beat him. Flesh was hanging off of his body.
Jesus knew what he was facing before he even got there. God knows all things, you know? So he's not surprised, but he knows how to bring us through a situation. But the situation may not be about you. It probably isn't. It's probably about the person standing in front of you or the people over there in that store. The, the situation is for somebody else's salvation or somebody else's maturity. Maybe it's not about you. I just want us to stay in the place of Christ. Stay right there in the heart of God. Stay right there with the mind of God, ready to do His will. Casting out all the, 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 the junk, all the mess. Casting it all down, tearing it all down by the Word of God. Everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God is brought down by the Word of God. The Word that's in you. Fear nothing. The only one we're to fear is God. And we come to this place, we come to this head where we are not moved by what we see or what we hear from our, our spouse, our children, our, our parents, or whoever else the person or the situation or circumstance might be. We're not moved by what we see or what we hear. We respond by looking at the Lord saying, you know. What is my part in this, Lord? Show me what to do. Show me your ways, Lord. The Lord will give us a word of knowledge. He'll give us a word of knowledge for that situation. And if not a word of knowledge, he'll protect you. He'll protect the people. But he knows what to do in whatever situation we are in. It's just a matter of submit yourself to God. Because when we do, the enemy has to flee. What happens when the enemy flees? Light takes hold of that territory. The kingdom of God has come. The kingdom of God has come. Well, the rock in my shoe. <laughs> that, that was an interesting thought that I had earlier as I was writing down these words. The thought was the situations and the circumstances of life. You know, I, I know people have had a rock in their shoe and you've got to stop and get this rock out of from underneath your foot. But in this case, in my imagination, I saw a boulder. <laughs> it wasn't exactly a boulder, but a big enough rock that I couldn't put my foot all the way down on the ground. It, it was big enough that my whole foot was like lumped over. And we come to this place where we take all these burdens and all of these cares and put them before the Lord because you can't walk if you're tied up and tangled up with the situations of life. We bring all the cares, no matter how hard they are, how resistant they are to the Word of God. That's not your problem. And you bring it into the house of the Lord. What is that? Hebrews chapter 4 again. I'm always here. I'm like, Lord, I... <laughs> One of these days, Lord, you're going to bring me far away from here, right? Maybe not. Let us therefore come boldly onto the throne of grace where we can, may obtain mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. That's what it says. Because we have a high priest that's gone before us into the heavens. It's not about how sad I am. It's not about how bad the situation is. It's not about how hard it is. If it wasn't hard for you or me, we wouldn't need God. But God has put us in this place, in this world. These fleshly beings <laughs> that are spiritual beings that feel this physical body. And we're uncomfortable with what we see. We're uncomfortable with what we hear. And the Lord wants to direct our steps in the knowledge of his will for whatever the situation is. For whoever the situation is for. 
But he definitely wants our hearts to be still and know that he is God. See that rock that has been wedged under your foot for so long a time. He wants to take that burden from you and heal your heart. He wants to heal the sole of your foot so that you can walk straight, so that you can walk out your salvation in the knowledge of him and go about doing good like Jesus. We are the children of God by faith in a miraculous God. In a miraculous God. Miracles, signs, and wonders come from him. And he works that into us. And we go forth laying hands on the sick, casting out devils, healing. You know, people get healed <laughs> because you prayed for them. We know, we know. It's not you, but you were the agent. You're the agent. You allowed yourself to be the go-between for that person. You allowed it by saying, yes, Lord, I love you. Thy will be done in this earth as it is in heaven. But the rock that is in our soul, in our shoe, in our soul, that's a good one too, needs to be removed so that we can have the very nature of our Lord Jesus. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Get the word in your face and be filled with the knowledge of the will of God. His will is not that you live for this world alone. You, you, we are the people who are building a treasure in heaven. We're only in this earth to make disciples. The reason that we're still here is to make disciples. Is to go about doing good like Jesus. There's no, you know, as long as we live in a sinful world, the only pleasure we have is in God. Now, he may give us a few things here and there, and that's fine with me. That's good and all. But I want to be in a world where there's no more sin and no more sorrow, no more death. No more losing those loved ones that we've been raised up with so long. No more losing children. No more. No, no more. That we are with the Lord forever. In his love. I know for all those who, who had children who have gone on to heaven. They are with the Lord. And we will see them again. But as for this world, that creates a sorrow and a heartache. But I praise God for his love and his mercy that restores our soul, that gives us the strength to get up and praise him, that gives us the strength to get up and help somebody else who's been through the same issue. Understand that some of the people we love are in heaven with God. They, they are with the Lord. And while we miss them in earth, we've got to do this job that the Lord has given us to do. And, and maybe, just maybe, these people that have gone on before us are part of that great cloud of witnesses saying, come on, you can do this. Come on, get up, wake up, get before the Lord, strengthen yourself in the word of God and be restored. Don't let that get you down. Come on, let's go. You can do this. That's, that's, those are the words I hear. You know, and I'll end it with a story. I used to work in a nursing home years ago. And there was this lady, her name was Marjorie. Marjorie? Marjorie. And um, I, she was on, we all had, you know, assignments to do. We have people who are our, our assignments. And they, because it's, uh, some of the rooms were two bedrooms, two beds in a room, you'd have there'd be an aid for one, one bed, and the, then there'd be another aid for the other bed just in case somebody needed help. You know, turning somebody, lifting somebody. That's how we worked that. And um, I remember I worked there and I took care of a lot of people. And 
I really loved what I did. And it was like, I'm not going to go through the whole entire story, but as soon as I left, and I didn't take care of Marjorie. There was another aide that did, but when I went into that room to take care of the other lady, she was always talking to me, just the sweetest, the kindest lady. I remember that when I left that nursing home, she passed away. And for some reason in my heart, I knew that she was in heaven watching and saying, come on, Sherry, I knew you can do it. You can do it. You know, you can do it. I always sense like she's watching over me. She was, I mean, just such a pleasant person. I know a lot of people don't believe in all that. And some people believe in all that a little bit too much. <laughs> but those people who have gone on before us, who are in the heavens right now. Listen, I know it said to be absent from the Lord is to be absent from this world is to be present with the Lord. That's what I'm I'm banking on with that with all that statement. They know already. They, if if that's the truth, if that's truth right there, then they already know. And they're rooting for you. Come on, come on, let's go. Do the work of the Lord. Do as much good as you can in this earth. Come on, get these people saved. Be the light of the world. Don't be hunkered down. Don't be angry. Don't be bitter. Don't be strifeful. Don't be resentful. Let go of unforgiveness. Come on, let's go. Win this race. Come on and get your crown. Do more than I did. Maybe some of them are saying that. Do more than I did, please. Do better than me. No, I'm going to let this go. But it's a rock under my shoe that I have to get rid of and lay it before the Lord. He knows what to do with it. The Holy Spirit's in you. He's the teacher. Let him help. Let the Lord restore your soul. God bless you all. This is Pastor Cheryl Jackson at Get the Word in Your Face International. Go out and do something good today. Make sure you smile. Bye-bye.